we're starting to realize there are very few uses of planet Earth that have got a sustainable future. Ranching is one of the few. What it takes to actually keep a ranch going, and I guess they don't really appreciate where their food comes from, I guess. It's just the satisfaction that you get out of being tied close to the land. so many challenges but so many rewards in it and challenges of financial like everybody has but there's those rewards of being able to work with your family on the same ground and work on the same ground that your great-grandfather walked on we have a lot of young people that have chosen to come back into our valley that are trying very hard one way or another to make agriculture work and granted, it's very different from the way our grandfathers did it, our, our fathers. But if, if you truly want to make it work, you're going to figure out a way to make it work. All they got to do is open their eyes and look around, I guess, to see what the family ranchers do. But I don't know whether they do or even care. Conservation that works has to work for the land. In other words, it's got to make sure the land stays healthy, but it's got to work for people. This is the only home I've ever known. It's the only place I've ever lived. Agriculture is not going to go away. It can't go away. Uh, you know, people need to eat, and, and we need to produce stuff and, and use the land what it what it was put here for. We do it because we love what we have. We have such a respect for the land and the water and the wildlife and the animals, and we want that opportunity to be there for our kids and our grandkids should they choose to do that. have second jobs to, to keep hanging on to these family ranches um, and a lot of them are mixed in with the tourism and, and, and that but uh, yeah I've seen I've seen a lot of changes it's it's, it's uh, not the small quiet town anymore I mean it's real busy all the time all year round good and bad In our valley, we're also very lucky that there's a lot of jobs that all of us can work at to help sustain this habit that we have with agriculture. Um, a lot of rural communities don't have that. Um, if you don't stick with agriculture and that's your only livelihood, you might not have another opportunity to find a, a, a job somewhere else. You gotta have a passion for it. It is, it, it's long hours, it's a lot of work, and, and it, it's not about the money. Um, you, you're in hopes that you can make enough, enough to, to live and, and pay your bills, but, but it's just the satisfaction at the end of the day, knowing that you've done something to better the land or to better the livestock and, and to better the wildlife. That's kind of how I'm taking off anymore. For a family of four like mine, if the land was paid for, and most of my machinery was paid for, and my cows were paid for, I mean, I didn't have big notes at the bank, I would probably need about 600 cows to live comfortably. But 600 cows in this country is a lot of land and a lot of hay, because our winters are so big. I mean, cow prices were good this last year, and, and, and neighbors and everybody did really well, but 
That happens about once every 10 years. Well, basically just trying to make a living, you know, but other than that, you know, I like as far as to try and keep open space and that kind of stuff and uh, just have something to pass down to my kids too, you know, if they, who knows whether they'll take an interest in being a rancher or not. I grew up across the street at my dad's house. Uh, all my schooling was here in Nucla and then went on down to Mesa. I played football down there and one year of basketball and then came back and was basically just the ranch hand, did whatever needed to be done. And then as the years progressed, dad started relinquishing a lot of those duties to me that he didn't want to do anymore. And then just got to where I basically took over. The thing that's out there about ranching or farming or anything else is that you can't just go and an average person just can't go out and buy a ranch or farm and get into the business and make a go of it. If you're going if you're going to have any chance at all of making a go of it then you're going to have to inherit it. In the early years, when we had all these mines and them two mills going, there was a lot of people in here. And then when they started shutting them down, well, people just left because there was nothing to to keep him here except what few ranchers there were. And, and there ain't that many of them them either. But other than that, that's about what you got. My dad, he says, you know, everybody had asked him when he's gonna retire. He said, well, when they kick dirt on me, I'll be retired, so. <laughs> That's kind of kind of my philosophy also, I guess, you know. And it's hard to find good help to come work on a ranch because you can't afford to pay someone a lot of money to work their butts into the ground, you know, so. The galleys uh, got into it uh, by running the Nucla Merck and they they, uh, it was hard times during the Depression, and they picked up a lot of property up around Ute uh, from overdue bills in the Merck. And so they were kind of latecomers to the cattle industry, but they've been going at it for 50, at least 50 years, you know, but before that, they're their parents were were business people. As far as ranchers around here that have young kids, there's not very many either, you know, so if something should happen, the coal mine or the power plant goes down, then I don't know what would happen. We'd be back to a one-room schoolhouse, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> My great-grandfather immigrated from Ireland in the 1860s and settled in New Mexico first and after he married, he and his wife Annie moved to Folsom, New Mexico and made that their permanent home. And Papa Joe, over the years, well into the 30s, acquired properties and put together a mercantile business there on the railroad at Folsom. He also did uh, wool contracts throughout New Mexico and, and Colorado. In northern New Mexico and southern Colorado, he put together seven ranches, one for each of his children. And today, six of those seven ranches are still in the family and still operating. And this ranch he bought in 1929, and it was called the Redlands Ranch. We're once again very interested in trying to have sustainable economies because we're starting to realize in this increasingly crowded planet 
that the planet is not keeping pace with our growing population, our increasing uh, materialism, our standard of living, which is increasing, you know, in the brick countries, for example. And ranching has withstood the test of time in the new world. We've been practicing it for over 400 years. In other parts of the world, we've been practicing it for much longer, and it persists into the future. Ranching business and lifestyle is a, is a challenge. You're constantly up against the weather in terms of what's, what's the limiting resource, and it's always the weather. Whether we're gonna have enough snow, whether we're gonna have enough rain. They just have a lot of problems that they have to deal with. The drought, the lack of water, the lack of feed, forest fires. The issue is, what's the most important use of the water? We've got to have enough water to sustain the livestock and the, and the agriculture industry, but we know we've got to meet the needs of the growing demand by the public in Colorado. Increasingly, the highest and best use of adjudicated water rights in Colorado is for houses, is for commercial development and residential development. Then Colorado, like other parts of the West, are growing, and so uh, to have residential and commercial development, like producing beer, you know, for example, you need water, you need a lot of water. And the water's a commodity, it can be bought and sold, so ranchers are faced with that dilemma uh, if they're not doing well economically, if, they're not, if they don't have a strong economy, sometimes they may have to sell water. They may have to sell it just to keep the ranch going. Water is a big issue out here in the West, and particularly after some years of drought. Um, you know, yeah, we're on, the, we're on the upper end of the water system here, but there's a lot of people downstream that depend upon it. But they gotta understand, they, they all need to eat down there too. I mean, they need, they need water to water their lawns and flush their toilets, but, but uh, we gotta have some water so they can have some food. The farmers and ranchers across the United States, and, and, and I'm so proud of the individuals in Colorado because they really are incredible stewards of their land. If, if they weren't doing a great job in their farming practices, if they weren't doing a great job in their ranching and management of their, of their renewable resources, they wouldn't be here today. You can't afford to be anything but a great steward of the resources and the land that you're taking care of. And they're really out there trying to do the very best they can with the knowledge and tools that we have today to produce a safe, quality food product and do it in a manner that's ethical and moral and meets the standards of anybody that wants to look in and, and come and see what we do on a daily basis. I uh, understand what we're, what we're doing, uh, you know. That we're not destroying the land, we're, we're improving the land. Ranching could be a model as more and more Americans gather around and try to study and then emulate things that are sustainable going into the future. And ranching right now is one of the few I can think of. There are so many opportunities in agriculture and it's a wonderful place to live and it's a wonderful place to raise your family and it's a wonderful place to have the coffee pot on and let your friends and neighbors come enjoy as well. I think a lot of people are infatuated with the lifestyle of a rancher, you know, the, they've seen the pictures of the cowboy riding into the sunset, but they don't understand that, you know, he's been on that horse since the sun came up that morning. <laughs> This business is a challenge, it can be frustrating, it's a hardship, but it yields so much more in terms of when, you, when you're able to get in balance with it, find that production level that works, you enjoy being around the animals and uh, the study of genetics and the, and the productivity of your cattle and trying to produce the best type of cattle that fits your environment, but also produce that high quality beef that the consumer likes to enjoy. I think a lot of these people are seeing it's good ecologically, it's good economically, um, and it's good for America. Do your own research. Don't believe everything you see in the media. Come out here, visit these places, get to know these families. Make yourself knowledgeable. Make yourself know that if you intend to continue eating 
um, at such a cheap rate as we do in the United States. And the food is always available when you go to the grocery stores. Please make yourself educated about why that has happened. We've got the land to produce our own and, and uh, to produce good, healthy food. Embrace it, use it. We'll need to look anywhere else for it, it's right here.